Hello, everybody. Welcome back to D&D 404. I am your DM, Tony. And joining with me today are the other three sweaty smash mains in my lineup. Fellas, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, starting with the neutral air down A into a smash J. -red. What's going on, guys? Armos checking in. Uh, my smash brother choice has always been Bowser. He's amazing. I love him. His grab, body slam. That's my that's my go to. Just like your Mario Kart choice. Down, and his down uh butt smash. Ugh, love it. What about you, Dan? Hello everybody. My name is Dan. I play Mindus Pebble Walker, your tiny little swarm keeper ranger. And I am absolutely the zero suit Samus of this podcast. Hitting you with that lightning whip. <laughs> zero suit Samus. <laughs> Why are you laughing? That's a great name. I know. It's just it's just a very Dan answer. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, uh, Drell? Uh, my name is Drell. I play... Never mind. It's Alec. <laughs> uh, I play Drell of the Ashbourne. Um, and I am talking long enough that I can Google Smash Bro characters. Jigglypuff is nice. one that I like to play a lot. <laughs> um, I like how she gets like mad or whatever. And then, um, yeah, I like how she can like sing people to sleep on the on the on the map. Yep, Jigglypuff. What about you, Tony? Yo, Ness all day, baby. Ness, I love Ness. Love me some Ness. Give me, gotta give me more of that Ness, baby. Psychic power, PK fire into that neutral air down grab. It's fantastic. Or now it's down grab into the neutral air and then side A. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's I think you can definitely baby. tell who plays this game and who does not. <laughs> I used to play. I actually fucking hate it now. Because <laughs> uh, I was so terrible at it. I couldn't get good at it, so I started hating it. But you know the deal. Before we get into the recap, we're going to do the rundown. Today's rundown is brought to you by J-Man. J-Man, what you got to give it to us? Okay. <laughs> now down the website, dnd404.com. Go check it out if you got some time. We got the episode blogs in there. You can leave a little comment. We've been reading them. It's pretty great. I appreciate you guys who have already started to leave some support on there. There's merch. So if you want to, you know, pick up a little hat, maybe a shirt, check them out. And then also, we're trying to throw in some news every once in a while. So if you guys got some articles, let us know. dnd404.com. Terrific. Thank you so much for that amazing rundown. Now you know the deal where I roll my giant rubber foam D4, and whoever it lands on has to do the recap for the last session. And let me get rid of that. I'd like to point out that Jared has said Bowser for the same answer in the past three sessions yo he's my boy yeah. he's my boy <laughs> okay excuse me i look like doo-doo all right how do you want me to throw it you know what i want you to throw it from the bathroom into the room no yeah. that's a bad idea <laughs> no, let's see it move the microphone though hit, hit it off the chair <laughs> into <clears throat> your room there you go. <laughs> try and use the chair as the backboard <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Wing it at the chair so that it bounces back towards you. There it's you go. It's usually the ridiculous ones that somehow he does perfectly, so. Uh, oh, he's. Oh, oh, look at oh, that. That was great. <laughs> oh, that was great. See that might you be your best tip? one ever. You see the tip? I can see the tip. I can't see who it is because it's so tiny. It's a good size. It's a three. It's Dan. Dan. Three's Dan! That is me. It is Dan. <laughs> Anybody have any suggestions for this one? Got one at the tip of my tongue. Oh, Super Smash Brothers announcer. <laughs> New character <laughs> approaching. Armos. <laughs> Armos hears a message in his head from the Blood Shards. Drell and Minus, in a panic with Alara Don Star, try to figure out what to do. Minus running downstairs. Drell. Standing there as people come through portals, they finally take the blood shard away from Armos and all the voices begin to stop. They go through portals with Lord Baron's friends. I can't remember their ra names right now, but they are... <laughs> what are their names, Tony? Nihilus and Moolin. As Nihilus and Moolin come through the portals, they bring our heroes back to Lord Baron's divider, where they talk to Lord Baron about plans to go up north to find Drell's father's axe. 
But as they stay there figuring out what to do, they have downtime. That's right, downtime. Drell decides to make more potions, but gets a really snarky note from Nihilus. Minus tries to help, but Drell tells him he's not very good at helping. And Minus goes to make more items probably has a list a uh, christmas list of about a thousand items as nihilus and mulan finally decide on one thing that he will make and armos restructures his spells yet again when armos and drell make their way into the manufactory at the bottom of lord baron's divider he finds the nothic that they thought was long gone but sure enough is not long gone and is actually their good wonderful favorite pal in the entire universe jack bolsinki bard play the music please good morning good afternoon and good evening and welcome to the world of humbrea featuring three first-time adventurers and one very patient dm this is D&D &D 404. Fellas, boyos, welcome to session 106 as we are in the heart of the Lord Baron's Divider bullpen where Lord Baron had walked you down into the center of the bullpen and the bullpen is this large pit of all these different types of magical experiments going on where the where science and magic are are living harmoniously to provide and come up with new solutions to modern day problems and in the center was a nothic magically attuning this purified acrylic shard to precise specifications and he was working on it and then when lord baron finally called out his true name jack bowden the nothic turned to face Drell and Armos as he revealed his true form as this tall, slender human with black hair and a big brown bushy beard with a very elongated Adam's apple and a very unique voice. And we're gonna go ahead and pick up that conversation where Bonin left off saying, so you need my help, do you? As he stares down Armos and Drell. Absolutely, not. this guy, no way. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I can only stay in this form for a certain amount of time and I gotta waste my precious moments on you being insulted after being called out from my work. The blood is up in Armus's face right now. Eyes <laughs> turning red just from the blood rushing to his <laughs> to his head <laughs> on how angry he is. He's also dressed like super obnoxiously. The robes are clearly too big for him that he's wearing he has like this leather belt has all this different like magical um components around his waist his staff is on the shorter side and he uses it more of like a cane but he looks very young despite his very long brown bushy beard and like black spaghetti like hair and he's looking at you his eyes his eyelids like half open and he's kind of giving you like a like a face his lips is protruding a little bit he's like what, what's got your what's got your oranges all up in a bunch all right so armus wants to like hold him hostage like everyone back type situation or the the nothing gets it so he's got a misty step behind him grab him around the the throat and then uh have like an eldritch blast ready to <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to shoot him if he says one more word. Uh, go ahead and give me a grapple check, almost as you try to swing your arm around him as you go to head and misty step. Dexterity check, actually. Do I get advantage? Mm. <laughs> Do not. Oh, 15. Huh. With a 16, he manages to slip out from the crook of your arm as he's just a little bit taller than you, just by a few inches, and he slips out. He goes, whoa, 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 bonks you on the head with his quarter staff as you try to like load up an Elders Blast. We don't get handsy around here. This is a non-violent area. As you can see, there's many magical things going on. Explosive things, very flammable. Uh. Now let me ask, what's your beef with me? After being missed in instantly, as he turns around, I uh, cast Force Cage. You go to cast Force Cage and you notice that it's instantly countered. Well then I counterspell is counterspell. It is not counterspell. Uh. As he chuckles, he point. He takes the quarter step that he's leaning on as a cane, and he and he taps on the massive arcane circle on the bullpen floor that is surrounding the gem. And he goes first time in a magical place. 
I know maybe you have a wizard tower of your own. I doubt it. I doubt you have your own wizard tower. But uh, as you can see, there have been precautions here. This is a place of nonviolence and such things can... Uh, 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 and there are such uh, safety precautions in place for people to not cast, um, you know, dark magics. Absolutely in a, a rage. He's still just casting everything he's got at this guy. <laughs> you are blowing through charges and spell slots. <laughs> I love the image of Armors just going... <laughs> <laughs> Pretty and much like super angry. <laughs> like, there are just puffs of smoke coming out of his hand. I didn't even tap into my own abilities yet. You can't even get past this circle. He'll try to obviously polymorph, which probably won't work. But then he'll try to crown of madness. He's throwing everything he's got <laughs> to try to see what goes through. Your spells are getting shut down as you're trying to do everything you can in your blind rage to try to get one over on him. And he's just like looking at you. His eye, his eyes are half open. He's leaning on his quarter staff. He's got one leg kicked over the other foot. Quite the arsenal you got. And this is not a me thing. This is a this is a Lord Baron thing. You gotta take it up with him. He points at Lord Baron standing next to you as you. He's just watching you cast spells. He goes, look, and he tries to cast a fireball, and it fizzles out in his hands. I mean, Armas is just gonna keep going until someone stops him. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. In your blind rage, we're going to go ahead and go over to Menace. Menace, what are you doing? You cut to Menace on a balcony, like way up on the top of the castle. Like someone had told him the best view of the castle, and he's sitting with the SIDS drinking uh, some sort of coffee that they whipped up for him. <sighs> Good mama, mama. Man, this is a great view, Sid. Me. You're right about this. It's been a while since we've been able to just <sighs> relax. Man. Wonder what the guys are up to. Whoosh. I will edge you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lord Baron uh, <laughs> leans over to Drell as Bowden is just like looking at Armos, like unimpressed, but has like a smirk on his face, uh, a shit eating grin, if you will, just egging on Armos as he's just standing there. And Lord Baron leans over to Drell and he goes, Well, what's with the hatred? Uh, yeah, I don't really. I don't really know. I think it's just been like a whole thing, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think, you know, you just had to be there. It's it's like a whole thing. I don't know. Okay, did he do something to wrong him? Sickening radiance! I wouldn't say that much. I wouldn't take that far. Um, It's more like he's been slippery the past, you know, year. I guess we've kind of now we're realizing we've seen him a few times and I think this is all just built up over the time, you know? Okay, 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 okay. You see Lord Baron goes, wipes his face. He like whoa, puts both hands through his, the wrinkles of his face, walks over and he puts his own walking stick in between Bowden and Armos. He goes, Armos? Perhaps from trying to burn down my home, let alone a great uh, structure of the kingdoms, that symbolizes uh, uniformity and an alliance between two rivaling kingdoms. How about we talk to one another? We do need his help after all. Yeah, Armos, why don't you talk to the guy? Yeah, Armos, why don't you talk to the guy? Yeah, you do need our help. You need our help. <laughs> what about Menace? Where's Menace? Cut to Menace in the cafeteria trying all the pastries. Oh man, Sid, this was amazing. Oh, let's bring some back for Drell. There's a Drell Sid like <laughs> stuffing its face, but it's just coming off the, this rock face because it doesn't really have a mouth. Oh, I'm Sid of the Arsborn. It's like <laughs> noon. Like, stop chugging ale. <laughs> Cutting back over. Cutting over to Bowden, still leaning. He goes, Well, I thought, you know, I did a pretty good job um, bringing the three of you together. And this is the thanks I get. Armos is still is is just seething you, you can just see the steam coming off his head <laughs> hot-headed one he turns over and he looks over at drell Bowden like just turns in place and he goes well i'm finally glad i'm able to meet you in person and he reaches his hands out to shake drell's hand and he goes i was great i was good friends with your father <laughs> well that makes one of us <laughs> just kidding and i shake his hand <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, the tragic story of Dreld, where Brax went off to fight gods and did it return home. Such is the Goliath way, or should I say the Ashborn way. Isn't that why you're here? Why you set out? And he, like, pokes you with his cane on, on against your calf and, like, he feels up, like, your forearm. 
He goes, didn't you want to come out and be strong and slay big monsters? Yeah, well, I mean, pretty much my whole goal was to come out here, adventure, and slay bigger beasts than my dad did. So I'm apparently finding out that they're a little bit larger than I thought they were, and I've got <laughs> a lot to do. So, Oh, there are many great beasts out there. But from what I see is that you're doing kind of well for yourself at your age. Yeah, I mean, I killed one with a trident from like 100 feet in the air. No big deal. That was kind of cool. Mm, over at Lelouch's Farm and Visions, or the Reservoir, right? The giant uh, squid and the giant, the, the giant <laughs> yeah. footpath. Yes, you I was know there. What I'm I saying. seen it happen. Yeah, I walked. You know the vibes. Hey. <laughs> Armos is pissed. So you have been following us this whole time. <laughs> well, I was visiting a friend. Oh, yeah. The uh, one menace went up to her room. What's her name? A menace was there. Para. So where is the little scamp anyway? Uh, Drell like looks around. I kind of forgot. Um, Cut to menace who is now just looking in random rooms. <laughs> Hello, is Drell in here? <laughs> In every room you look in, there's like a Sid that happens to be in there, just conversing with who, who's ever in the room. You're not sure how the Sid has gotten there, but like this is just in every single room you happen to be looking. A Sid. Sid Alpha, what are you doing in here? Mer! Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'll leave you alone. Give me <laughs> privacy. I move on to the next room. <laughs> Sid Beta, Sid Sigma, uh, Sid Omega, uh, so on and so forth. Yep. And you eventually <laughs> stumble into the bullpen where everybody in Lord Baron's fire usually ends up if that not resting or in transit to do whatever they need to do and you overlook and you see armos in like a blind rage next to this wizard four months four months you've been following us oh, <laughs> oh he's mad about something it's been a lot longer than four months you no, it's, it's like... been quite a few years since i've been with you oh. We should get down there, Sid. He's, he's mad about something. And he pokes you, and Armos, he pokes you with his little quarter staff right on the nose. He boops you. You little time travel you. I will end you. Wait, what? Excuse me. <coughs> Coming through. Uh, uh, Drell, uh, 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 I found you. <laughs> How's it going over here? Did you bring me any snacks? Oh, yeah, I did. They had this pretty cool uh, cinnamon pastry. Here, try it out. Mm, I actually don't like cinnamon. Do you have anything else? <laughs> they have a lemon one. Okay, and they I'll also. Take that. Okay, yeah, lemon. That's all you. And as I hand begin to hand it to Drell, I look over, and then the pastry drops on the floor and splatters. Jack, nobody move! And I try and cast spells as well. No, he's no. He just looks at you and be like, hmm. He starts to sniff you, and he goes. Summon beast, wed, long strider, inflict wounds, uh, gaseous form, uh, guiding bolt. Uh, 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 Armos, what's going on? I can't do my spells. Uh, I point to the the blue thing in the middle. I'm conserving my rage to, to only lash out at uh, Jack. <laughs> you see that he like pokes your horns, Menace, and he goes, I've always been fascinated with goats. Such wonderful creatures of lore. Net! And I throw my net at him. <laughs> you see, like, the net just drapes over him. <laughs> right, right, very right, right well. And he, like, gingerly takes the net off. Oh, uh, what is it? What is this guy doing here? Well, I was working on something, and he points to the one of the acrylic shards that had been purified that he's been modifying from last session. And he goes, well, I was in my work, and Lord Baron had distracted me from my concentration to apparently talk to this gentleman here. When I revealed my human form, which will end soon, and he like looks at like a magical arcane watch on his wrist uh, and it rolls down his sleeve, he goes, which will end soon. Um, but apparently he was going to ask me something before he tried to murder me. And he does air quotes. <sighs> oh, we, we need help. I look at Armos with squinty eyes, and I'm guessing he's the only one that can help us. Absolutely not. <laughs> at this point, Armos is pacing back and forth. Well, I assume the three of you have talked to Lord Baron and have heard out our great plan. That the three of you need to venture to the valley and reclaim Drill's father's axe. Uh-huh. Yes, in which the three of you can... 
uh, get powerful weapons to destroy a crystal's phylactery because the onset doom that this one, he points to, uh, points to Armos, this one has now unleashed upon Humbrea. I'm going to show you unleashed. <laughs> his hands are clenched. Oh, will you? And he, like his arms go up. You better not leave this. And I, I point to the the sphere. Better not leave this <laughs> area. <laughs> I do not plan to leave this bullpen until my job is done. And apparently you want to add to that task. So while I am in this form and able to speak the common tongue before my narcissism returns and plagues us all, please let us converse. I'm standing next to Drell now. I'm like, yeah, so this guy, I'm guessing this guy's a wizard that can help us or something, huh? I am a great and powerful wizard. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm getting at too. Jack, Bullsinky is a wizard. Next, you're going to tell me that that Nothic is around. <laughs> okay. Only if comedic timing was, was present at the moment. What? what? I am the Nothic. Minus faints. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a spell. That was just the truth. <laughs> and he, like, <laughs> talks to everybody. <laughs> he gestures that, like, now all, like, these halflings, gnomes, elves are, like, just, like, looking around you. Because when you can get the sense that when Bowden speaks people listen regardless of the gibberish he's spouting and he wakes you up he like come on get 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 up get up come on you little heifer come on uh, oh, don't touch me <sighs> i'm fine and the name is jack bowden not bosinki oh my god he like gently pats your cheek as he like he helps you stand up as you refuse his help and then he gets serious and you see that his comic de uh, facial demeanor drops as his eyebrows get low. We have things we need to talk about. Some serious things. And although we can sit here all day and watch Armos cast fireballs that he seems to be having a little bit of an issue with, we need to tackle the larger problem at hand. You see, we have things we need to do that will take weeks, and we don't have the weeks to do it. <sighs> now, Lord Baron had advised me, or had summoned me, to help you. And there is information I wish to relate to you, information that you may need to know to take down our common enemy here. And I'll tell you what, to sweeten the reward, Armos. When all this is said and done, when a crystal is banished from our very lives, and hopefully put down for eternity, I will give you this duel that you so that you crave from within your fiery soul. Armos is still mad, but still listening. <laughs> okay. There's a lot to take in right now, but since you are Bowden and you were clearly friends with Drell's dad, I will put aside our differences for now to help you help us help you help everyone. He looks at Minus, and then he gives a side eye over to Armos. He tilts his head, and he has like a little bit of a cutesy face on. Armos, can you do with your what your friend is doing? I'm listening as best I can right now. Are you listening to respond, or are you listening to help? He doesn't doesn't say anything. He's just gritting his mm. teeth, just like <laughs> the the weight of the situation is finally coming. Is, is the blood's slowly? coming down from a boil to a, a small simmer. He's still angry. <laughs> that is our most version of a yes. So we are on board. Okay. We will help you. And let's all be business about this. Of course. Of course. And he gathers the three of you together, pushes you along, and he goes, let us take a seat. Claps his hands as all these mage hands fly out from underneath his robes as they seem to gather uh, various snacks, drinks, and coffees and teas. And a table is now revealed off to the side of the bullpen in which he appears there and is waiting for the three of you to sit. And as the three of you begrudgingly sit, he returns to a serious demeanor as he begins to drink some tea and tap the side of his cup with his spoon. Takes a long, obnoxious sip. <laughs> You hear cranking, and you see that Minus has borrowed a crank stool from one of the <laughs> scientists. <laughs> Whoa! I need one of these at home. <laughs> so, Drell, we need to get your father's axe 
Yeah, that was the plan. I think, at least, right, guys? And I turn and look at everyone else. Yeah. Your father's axe was crafted by Scurrius and has already been prepared to handle one of these purified acrylic shards. These, the two that we have in our possessions, are indeed created and crafted by me. Scurrius is currently working on one for Minus. However, we need a third. He looks at you, Armos. Now, Lord Baron may have mentioned that you might have something in mind and giving you a astute evaluation that you may have something for me. I have something for him? What? Armos, the gem. Armos, pay the man. I mean, yeah, the gem. What? <laughs> I don't know. I just got used to saying it. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's He was too angry to... Uh, he was thinking the entire time we got those Acrylis gems even though he created them and he was there right next to us the entire time but then once he figures out that we're talking about reginald he softens up just a little bit as he presents the gem he takes the red gem and he looks at it and he goes yes this is an acrylic shard of course yes so the problem with this is that it takes some time to purify and then he looks at it you see his stare gets more serious and he goes hold on is there something living within here? Yes. He almost doesn't want to admit it because it's going to make him sound weaker than he is. Because <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have his patron. Is this a demon from Beiloon? Yes. <laughs> he's talking through his teeth. <laughs> he smacks his lips and he thinks over and he's like brushing his long brown beard. I could purify this. The problem is I do not know the nature of the beast. Would the beast be willing to allow me to purify this gem? Uh, well, I mean, is he going to get eight wings or... I don't know anything about no wings. I don't even know if he'll survive the process. Uh. If he rejects the purification, two things could happen. One, if he rejects it, he'll die. Two, depending on how it's entwined with the acrylic shard, the acrylic shard could break and could we get a good option or are we just gonna just leave it there with the-, the good option is that if he agrees and you think the beast of burden within this gem will comply with the ritual then we get a purified acrylic shark what happens to him well if he accepts it then perhaps he lives this would be a first even for me uh, reginald if you can hear us shake shake once there's no response yeah, oh no. Armos, can you talk to him? Do you have a, like, can you, t- can you touch it and use te- telepathy? Can you t- enter the gem? Ha- 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 do, do I sense Reginald at all? Or You sense him like how Bowden sensed him. You know that the, the gem is powerful. It's e- it has an evil nature to it. And there is something. And you, you do sense Reginald inside. You can't talk to him willingly. You notice that you know that when you have spoken to him last time, you were in like this dreamlike state. You've you've taken significant amount of damage. It was like a, it was like a visage that you've received. We're gonna have to wait till he communicates to us to ask him. The thing is, we don't have much time. When you return with Brax's axe, Minus's gem will be done, in which we will need to figure out how we will don him with that with with the gem. And if you don't have what you need to be equipped with when you see a crystal you may not be able to be much of help i feel like we're getting tuned for like the anixia fight you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> here's here's the thing the weapons we know that a crystal is some form of lich how he achieved his lichdom we haven't quite figured out a lich has a phylactery we believe the phylactery is a part of him and of which we can take a part of his body and he gestures to the acrylic shards and purify them, we can use it against him to destroy what he has created and hopefully slay him for good. You can break him down as much as you want. And believe me, I have once before. He will just return. So like when we go on this journey to find the ax, are you saying we'll at least have time to try and speak with reginald to get an answer i feel like we don't have any choice here is what he's telling us because regardless we need the shard Mm. with reginald or not what you do with your time here you can sit and wait 
for the purification to be done. Or you can leave, and when you come back, the purification will be complete, hopefully. It takes about eight weeks to purify one of these gems, and that's without a demon. Uh, could be quicker, could be longer. It's not give us a lot of time. Lord Baron needs about two weeks as is, and you look over to him and he nods to get the supplies you need to travel to the valley through North Trillis. A very harsh, harsh terrain up there. So we can see, you can sit around, you can wait, or you can leave in about two weeks, travel on the journey, and maybe I'll be done by the time you get back. Choice is yours. Now, as far as your friend goes and asking for, for your permission, that was a bit of a ruse. Almost is right. You don't have a choice. Things tend to come easier for those when they believe they have the choice and believe they are making the right choice. I was just staring at the gym. Does the demon inside mean a lot to you? Uh, yeah. You could say he's like just a pet. Armos. A pet? <laughs> Armos, don't lie to him. Rude. <laughs> he's, you know, a buddy. Keep going. Uh, acquaintance? I cross my, my arms. Yeah, you know that disappointed mom look when she knows you're lying and she wants you to tell the truth and she puts her hands on her hips? That's what Drell's doing. There is now a Drell of the Ashbourne, Sid, and now an Armos, Sid. They have their arms crossed. Sid of the Hellfire. Hellfire. Sid of the Hellfire. Oh and their arms are just crossed looking at you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Where's the Reginald skin? Uh, the S Reginald Sid. <laughs> There's a Reginald Sid in the back somewhere, right? It's an even smaller Sid at the base of it's almost on top foot. of Sid of the Hellfire. <laughs> <Get that. laughs> uh, and I just point to to the Sids because <laughs> I don't want to say it. <laughs> Bowden looks at you, almost. He goes, "I will do everything I can to save your friend." Bah, bah. And I'm like waving my hand towards our most best, bestest. Oh my god! Your bestest. <laughs> uh, it, I'm pointing at my journal on my best <laughs> friend column that has him and Drell at the top. Bestest. Oh my god! Say it. <laughs> I'm not leaving here until you say it. There's no way I would say that. He gets up frustrated. I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> <laughs> and Menace walks in the other direction, <laughs> not knowing where he's going, and then realizes he hits a wall. I'm, I'm leaving angrily. He takes the gem. There's one more thing we need to discuss before we go about our ways. He takes the Krillis gem and he puts it in his oversized sleeve within his robe. I will take care of this and I will begin working on it. And then he looks at your tome, almost at your wayside, and he goes, I'll make sure it fits that that grimoire you have hanging at the hip. And perhaps it could empower you in your future adventures. But there's something that we need to explore on before we go. You see, a Christo takes on many shapes. When I saw him, he looked like a great and powerful wizard. I assume that when you saw him, despite my research, that he takes on many different shapes. Perhaps what you believe is the perfect version of yourself, or what you believe is the perfect version of your being, so to speak. And Armos, Minus, and Drell, Drell, you instantly think of your father, uh, a younger version of your father, who's strong, stoic, full of rage, and, uh, ready to fight almost you look you think back to what you saw this this sophisticated older tiefling that looks like he has all of his shit together it looks like he's in uh, endowed in in power and dark magics and looks like he has everything going for him menace you see this like hulking minotaur that is like your ideal definition of what a minotaur should be and what maybe you wished you looked like when you were younger because of the fact that you were so small back when and your, and your growth was stunted. As you know, that this is not a Christo's true appearance. The only part of him that is real is his gauntlet. It seems that's where his power originates from and his, his, um, his arcane focus, some of us of the weave would say. A Christo's, what we believe a Christo's true race to be. And now if you can imagine, there's more of him. However, we never actually seen any. 
and he pulls out an old wizard stone like a portal opens up next to him and he reaches his hand inside and you can see a glimpse through the portal it looks like a massive library is just beyond it and he pulls out a tome and it's a book of the astral sea it's a thinner book because there's not a lot of knowledge about the astral sea and he opens up to a section and it's a very short passage and he goes we believe that a crystal is a shard mind those words mean nothing to me i'm, I'm gonna be real they sh as they should because nobody knows nobody's ever seen them before how this book is ancient this book is thousands of years old perhaps they have come here and visited once and left or perhaps somebody had some great magical user has surfed the abyssal sea and found something called the living gate which is where shard mines are from shard mines are constructs of pure crystal and they can manipulate their body in many different ways so you're saying i didn't see mirror nor i saw a crystal reflecting nizing light <clears throat> i know big words to make it look like Miranor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know who Miranor is, but perhaps you are onto something. Oh, me, right. Mm. I assume so. this is some Miranor, somebody you look up to. R.I.P. A hero of yours, mm, perhaps. I cannot <laughs> wait. Well, that's the hero there. Who's our heroes? Who we look up to? Who we uh, base our entire life upon is not a here nor there because soon people will base their livelihoods on your decisions that you are about to make when you go out and set on this quest to save Humbrea, not only Saltrillis, but <sighs> Humbrea as a whole. Cool. Cool. So, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to begin to work on this gem. If you choose to stay the full eight weeks, that potentially takes me to purify it, so you are most equipped for your journey, so be it. But Lord Baron can take you through the step of, of your next steps. And then you see Bowden begins to like shift scales and uh, dry skin begin to plop out uh, from underneath his robe. He goes, well, it looks like my time uh, here is, is, is done as in my human form as I now <laughs> and you see like his face melt into a giant eye. His jaw becomes elongated, spikes pop out the back of his spine and he is now a Nothic again. Oh my God, that just instantly happens, huh? <laughs> And he's holding this acrylic uh, shard. He goes, rah, rah, and then you see that he waddles away back to the circle where he looks like he's beginning the preparations to purify this gem. And Lord Barrett comes in and he goes, we do know that the three of you have to travel to the north. We are currently making those preparations. We are gathering materials to, uh, to craft you winter clothes so you can survive the elements. We are currently procuring uh, a beast that will be able to handle the harsh weather so that you may travel. We may need to train it. We are looking for the items that you have requested for your journey. We're looking up new brews for you, Drell. But this, but these things take time. And from there, we're going to go ahead and do a bit of a time skip. As the three of you now realize that you're going to be here for a little bit before you're able to set out on your journey. And we're going to go ahead and skip one week. And during this week, the three of you have used your downtime to not only relax, but like talk amongst each other, come up with like a plan on may, how you may want to travel. You do know that Lord Baron is providing you a carriage to, that is capable of traveling through snow. He's trying to get a beast of some kind to pull it. Uh, he's giving you supplies to survive the harsh winter. The three of you have started to become much more familiar with Lord Baron's divider as you now have free reign and you each have your own room and you start to make friends with some of the people around there. And as one week passes, you notice that Lord Baron uh, had advised you via letter because now he's very busy that the materials for the harsh winter to survive in the harsh winter have arrived and the crafting of these very warm furs has begun so this is where i want to come down to you guys during the so we're going to take it week by week and when you three feel like you're ready to adventure out is when we'll start but right now you do not have the current you don't have a cart and you don't have an animal to pull your sleigh just yet and you need to wait a little bit more so what did the three of you do in this week of downtime okay so Jarrell would like to work on 
crafting some brews. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I would also like to spend, I think last episode we talked about increasing my intelligence. Yes. So then Drell just wants to like continuously like hit the books. And yes. I, guess, I guess like primarily maybe doing like history or like about like a Christo and you know, like the, like when, when the, when a, a Christo first came and like took that guy. Oh, the red catastrophe. Yes. When he took Horatio. Yeah. And like learning about the red. Yeah, uh, learning about like the red catastrophe. Mm -hmm. So you begin um, to hit the books and you start reading about history and, and and things of that nature, and you're trying to make yourself a little more knowledgeable about the world around you, and you begin to hit the books. So that's not going to happen directly after one week, but you, but that's how you spend your time. Yeah. In between brews and and relaxing. Yep. Exactly. Now, what about Minus and Armos? What are the two of you doing during your first week? Yeah, I spend that that week, like we talked about last session, helping in any way to procure some magic items that would help me on my journeys. Yeah. So, Minus, you begin to talk to Nihilus and Mulan about um, the items you're looking for. You made you have made them a list, and you you and Armos had given them a list of like items you're trying to sell, things to lighten your load, and they have advise you that they're going to take care of this as it does take some time and they are busy but they're going to do their best to accommodate your needs and you notice menace specifically with you the more people that you begin to talk to you notice that like sids are now like copying some of the people you're talking to more so now there's like a sid for nihilus and mulan and it looks like they're just following them around and as you become friends with them they're like your sids are like branching out to people and like acting as an extension of your kindness towards other people and you notice that like they're taking on their personalities as well. just oh, something you Sid. notice since you've been doing Sid, this is amazing look at all the sids there eh. there's a mule in one there's a a lord baron sid oh my god there's a jackbull city <laughs> dang it <laughs> it's super obnoxious <laughs> all the other sids hate that sid <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Armos, just like Minus, you have given him a list of gems you would like to sell. That would also take some time. Is there anything else you would like to do within your first week? So he's either going to blow off steam and do like one of the options on this thing was like a fighting pit. So he's going to be like training as much as possible <laughs> or uh, scribing spell scrolls. So we'll say that you spend this, you start spending your downtime to scribe some scrolls. You don't get any scrolls yet as this is a ongoing yeah. thing you'll need to do, but it's a great way to also like blow off steam as like you go outside on a balcony and like you shoot like your scorching rays through your eyes and like you're just getting the fire out with, uh, by any means possible. However, you still do not have your fiend abilities just yet as because Reginald is still locked away. Mm -hmm. And after the first week, as the three of you are living within Lord Baron's divider, you do hear some news as there are some scouts that report back in on a, on a daily basis. And throughout this week, you have noticed that there's rising attacks on supply and merchant convoys on the road, specifically on Capitol Road. You know that Capitol Road goes from the city of Aramore to Dilmore to Gilo. It's like a main trading road. It was a road that you traveled on way back in, in arc one and two. And you know that you, you've been hearing news reports that there have been more attacks on this road and supplies are getting where they need to be. And the three of you continue your downtime as we now progress into the end of the second week. And as the three of you are scribing scrolls, blowing off steam, um, Menace, you're helping by any way you, you can and Drell hitting the books. Um, as you come together for meals during like lunchtime, you see that the giant gates open from Lord Baron's Divider, and you see that there are a bunch of gnomes and halfling pulling on ropes, and you hear this roar of a beast as a mammoth is being pulled through the front door. And you see Nihilus and Mulan like run up to the stairs to the main hall, be like, oh great, the travel procurement has arrived. As this, as you are getting a mammoth to help pull you through the harsh tundra of North Trillis. Whoa. Those beasts are amazing. Very hard to find, as uh, Mulan cries out. 
It's like, yes, we just need to train it so it listens, but they are gentle beasts, and we shall do our best so it doesn't run off on you in case you get to any danger. And he, like, they pull it, and they pull it to an area where it's, uh, they pull it to, like, a safer area where, like, beasts live in within Lord Baron's Divider. And the week continues as normal. The three of you are still doing your thing. And Nihilus and Milan are still working on your requests. Week three comes along. And the three of you have now started spending some time, while still doing what you're doing, has started spending some time with the Mammoth, as now the Mammoth has been trained in its basic needs to pull. Lord Baron comes out, and he goes, well, he meets the three of you like in a yard in between your downtime activities. And he goes, the basic necessities for your travel have been met. We have your warm clothes, we have your cart, and we have your, we have your transportation. And he gestures to the Mammoth, and he goes, we haven't... There's still much you may need, but if you are in a rush to get on a road, you have what we have our basic necessities. So if the three of you would like to leave now, you won't gain any benefits of your downtime activities that you've been working on, but you can leave if you if you would like to. I was just gonna say I would like to stay in least at least for like a week or two and like work on stuff. Cool. Yeah, I think I think Minus is thinking the same thing. As the third week ends, there have been increasing news uh, of attacks throughout the second week where now very small towns and hamlets have been desecrated and have seen rising cultist activities. And by the end of the third week, Minus, a paper is handed to you by Mulan. And they go, we have some bad news. There was a recent attack at the Sigic College. What? What are you talking about? Sigic College was able to defend itself off, but we have closed the school oh. to the public. Well, that's good. A good decision. We have sent people who wish to go home magically, and those who wish to stay do not have any other place to go, and now living within the Sigic College. The Nihilus and Mulan are telling this to the three of you. But we found something among one of the cultist bodies, and he hands it to you, Menace. And it is a wanted poster. It's a bounty letter for Menace pebble walker and it's requesting that you are retrieved alive oh specifically to the city of stratham which is what you know as red city yes okay this makes sense oh shit minutes you're wanted bro the price on your head five hundred thousand gold pieces <laughs> i spit out my, my drink armos i look at armos <laughs> Do we really like this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Do these guys have a lot of posters or just me? We've only seen ones of Minus. I really like to think, uh, and this is just because I started watching this, uh, like One Piece. Yeah. How, how <laughs> Luffy has his wanted poster and Jarell and Armos are just like in the background. <laughs> like the back of Jarell's head is in the back of it. <laughs> like, oh, there I am. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, that's not surprising news, but the reward is surprising. <laughs> I'm not sure what provoked this. Perhaps there's a cultist member that really doesn't like you, and it's a rich one. Mm. Yep. And then we go into the fourth week. You see that there's now like supplies and crates coming in. Minus and Armos. A number of your gems were sold. And we'll get to how much you make in just a little bit. Uh, but a number of your gems were sold. And you gain a couple of hundred of gold from it. And I'll let you know what the exact number is in a moment. But Minus... Nihilus comes up to you and says, good news. We have procured one of the items that you have requested. Uh, oh. While we were selling some of your gems, uh, we actually found it in the town of Dilmore. So, Menace, what you're going to do for me now is that you're going to roll me a D4 uh, as one of the items that you have requested had been found, but we're leaving it up to chance to see which one has been located first. So go ahead and roll me a D4 and let me know what you get. Before that's our mascot. I wish I had your big die. Uh, it's mine. Don't touch my big day. <laughs> oh, I got a one. That is that is the boots of speed. Um, it is a wondrous item, and while you wear these boots, you can use a bonus action to click your boot heels together. Oh my god! What's if this? You, what do these do? I put them on. They're, they're boots. 
There are boots. They make you go fast. Uh, the boots double oh. your walking speed, and any creature that makes an opportunity attack against you gets disadvantaged <gasps> to the, to their attack roll. I don't know what they mean by their attack roll, but if you click your heels together again, you end the effect. So basically, oh. you use a bonus action, and you go double the fast. Uh, you double your walking speed. Oh, my uh, gosh. And it can be used for a total of 10 minutes per long rest. Hey, Drell, want to see me go really fast over to the baked goods? Want to see me do it again? <laughs> uh, yeah, so you have you can use the boots for a total of 10 minutes per long rest. So uh, you do need to keep a little round tracking here if you're going to use them uh, over multiple periods of combat or situations. Yeah. Did I get like one for each of us? No, you got one. <laughs> really? <laughs> Was there not more? Well, we, we we only found one. We found it in a used item shop, believe it or not. Uh, and it turned out to be legit, which we usually stray away from when it comes to used magical items. But however, we were trying to sell uh, some of your gems. But due to the recent attacks on the road, people weren't really buying gems at their highest price point. It seems that the economy is kind of in shambles within bigger towns and people just don't really aren't looking for ornate gems at the moment. Uh, however, we were able to use some of the gems and some of the funds we got from it to purchase one of these and which is what you wanted, right? And Nihilus like looks at you. It's exactly what you wanted. It was on the list and now we got it for you. And are you happy? I would say satisfied. No more than heavy. Either way, either way. When you say yeah. that, Drell, you have your spectacles on and you have like a history book <laughs> open in front of him, and like you have like a quill and you're like taking notes. And the notes you're taking are actually quite sophisticated as you've gained a point in intelligence. Uh, so it goes from eight to nine. Is that what you mean? That's what it does. Nice. After four weeks of harsh studying and hitting the books and determining, uh, being determined, you have gained a point of intelligence. Armos, you managed to create three level three spells for scrolls, and I'll let you choose what spells they are. Mm -hmm. Okay. As the three of you are conversing with Nulis and Myla, uh, Mulin and Nihilus, and you have got some of the equipment you have requested, you, you hear noise come in uh, from the main gate, and as they're like two halfling scouts, and they look tattered and their clothes look singed as it looks like they just survived an ambush and they're heavy breathing they're like Lelouch's farms Lelouch's farms it's it's burnt to the ground and you see that they like hand some paperwork as like people rush over and Lord Baron like is now out of his office and you see that they take the report he's like scrolling through and there's a sh um, there's a stone in there for encode thoughts what you used Armos showing what they have witnessed and Lelouch's farm and vineyard has been destroyed, which you know that Lelouch's farm, those five locations, generate about 70% of South Trillis' food pop uh, food source. And it has been burned down. Drill slowly just starts grabbing a few more rolls from the table. <laughs> uh, he goes, if, they, if we, don't, we don't, we need to do something, otherwise South Trillis is gonna, gonna result in a famine. And there was these red dawn sigils everywhere, marking the burnt and scorched ground. You know, as you've been there back in Arc 3, that Lelouch's farm and vineyards make up about 70% of the Kingdom of Aramor's food supply, with some exporting to the Kingdom of Brim. It's also a hot Taurus spot, and you know that if the cultists had burned the crop, that there may have been some civilian deaths as well, because you do know it's a hot Horse attraction. So, as we end out the fourth week with this terrible news, Drell, you just got an increase to your intelligence set, and Minus, you just got these new boots of speed. Yeah, boy. <laughs> and this new and, uh, and uh, Armos got some uh, has made some scrolls of three uh, level three spells. What are the three of you doing during this downtime? As you now just heard this news about Lelouch's farm. If we wanted to get going, we can't because they're still training the mammoth. You can leave now if you like. The mammoth has had some basic training, so now it's like friendly towards you. You have made the three of you are familiar with the mammoth at this point. It knows that it's going to pull a cart. The cart is ready and you have warm clothes and you have basic rations as of right now. I mean, I mean, is there 
I mean, should we go down to Lelouch's farm? Is there something we can do there and help? I mean, they make most of the food for South Trilla, so I'm just thinking... And Menace, think of your, your goat friend that you talked to for so long. I mean, he's down there in danger. Like, don't you want to try to go save him? Wait, what goat friend? Mikalathi Cthulhu. Oh, you remember the goat. <laughs> no, I don't remember. I don't remember talking to a goat. That doesn't sound like something I would do. The, the goat, you literally talked to him for like a long time. <coughs> we were like, hurry up, Menace. Uh, ho uh, hold on. First, I got to check out these boots. Yeah, I click my heels <laughs> and run away. Uh, amazing. So Lord Baron approaches you and he said and he says as Drell mentions that idea to go to Lelouch's and he goes, We're gonna do everything that we can to send the proper forces to Lelouch's and provide aid. I'm sure that the Queen herself is also doing the same thing, sending some of her forces, and we're they're going to reinforce Lelouch's as as well as the smaller towns along that road. We know that Minas is now wanted among the Red Dawn. There is also a wanted poster for the three of you collectively from the Queen. Now, the Queen does yes. not know the three of you are here. <laughs> Knew it! Drell turns around like fist bumps. He's like, finally! <laughs> Su felt super left out when Minas had a wanted poster. <laughs> I zip back with my boots. Oh, so what's what's the, the price on all of our heads? Well, you, 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 they just have... Well, the three of you are just wanted by the kingdom of Aramor oh. or vandalism and conspiracy to what? work with the Red Dawn as the three of you have made your name as Bloodshard Bandits. We did nothing of the sort. <clears throat> uh, we're rebranding ourselves, okay? Rebranding or not, you did burn down a tavern. What? Well, technically, uh, Who wait, said that? yeah. No, Armus definitely did do it though. No, Drell. <laughs> what? what? I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I said Armos don't do it. Wait, wait, wait. What tavern? There's been a few. Hang on. No, you were... <laughs> a few? <laughs> they tried to capture and kill Drell. What were we supposed to do? Oh, yeah. D okay, they deserve that. Wait, is that the one that Minis got stabbed in? No, no, it's oh, a different yeah. one. That one, they deserved it. <laughs> he taps, he bangs, his, he bangs his walking stick on the floor, <laughs> on the marble floor, and he goes, here's the thing. We can't go out and start helping every little guy out there every town where the big or small in cities are dealing with their own strife at the moment but it is nothing what compares to the big picture because these attacks will keep happening unless we take care of the main problem we're still training the mammoth outside to be better fitted for battle if the three of you have come across it the trolls is a very dangerous place and, there's, and they have their own problems up north. We want to make sure you have a reliable source of transportation as you traverse the Harsh Tundra. Now, the three of you can leave today or tomorrow. However, there's still things that could be done to better prepare you for the trip. And Armos, if you're waiting for your friend, you are already a month in. And we know that Bowden is making some progress on your Krilla Shard. I mean, I feel like the Acryla Shard getting back to Armos is like a power... I don't know. I feel like we should wait for it. It's like a power spike for him is what I'm trying to say. It's like, good. I mean, what is... Tony, Tony almost just talked to his Reginald. I could feel it. I mean, we could wait. I mean, it's up to you guys. I how, mean, it's up to... How long would the Shard take? I mean... He said two days, right? That's what he said. Two days? Bowden said two months. Oh, oh two months. No. Okay. Whoa. Nope. No, Never mind. Geez. I heard two days for some Look, reason. We we like Reginald, but I mean, I'm really good with animals. I think we'll be fine. I'll help with the mammoth. No, I mean I'll drive the mammoth. What? What do you mean you'll drive the mammoth? Yeah, I I drive our carts. What do you mean? Why would you drive the cart? Well, c carts are different, and mm -hmm. when we mm -hmm. handled. Oh, okay, uh, actually, Drell will be driving the cart. <laughs> yep, that's what I thought. <clears throat> because he is our car driver. Exactly. Thank you for recognizing that. Yes. Okay, but I get to name the mammoth as I start walking away. Fuck. Dang it. Really was hoping for <laughs> Mammy the mammoth. <laughs> We're going to name him Beethoven. Beethoven. Beethoven the mammoth. I like it. Classical, Lord Baron chimes in. Beethoven seems very noble and regal and 
mighty. It's a hefty name for a hefty animal. Right. Well, we're happy to leave. I think we're on the same page as soon as possible. I yeah. mean, we'll never be as prepared as we think we need to be, so. Well, the choice is yours. Yours alone. If you like to wait for the gem to be purified, that'll still take some time. We can gather more supplies. Or if you feel that the basic training that we gave to Mammoth within the last week or so is enough, surely we could certainly send you on your way. You only get one shot at this. Yeah. Uh-huh. What again are we supposed to do when we get... Oh, yeah, good question. ...to the axe location? Just grab it and go? Yes. Uh-huh. Simply put, something tells me that the axe will not just be left unguarded. The Valley of Winds is a treacherous place. And he looks at Drell. He looks back at the two of you, and... Um, the axe has been there for a number of years. Um, sh- maybe something has found it. It is in the den of Frostoon, after all. Ah, but his dad slayed Frostoon, so it's probably just chilling there. That he did. That is very true. I hope. I hope. Are you calling my dad a liar? No, I'm not calling your dad a liar. Then what do you mean you hope? No, I just hope nobody went in the cave mm-hmm. while he was gone. Mm-hmm. Like, hopefully he slayed the beast, right. and that's course. cool. Yeah, but, of course. But, you know, other people don't know, so they might have gone in. Drill squints his eyes. <laughs> Sid of the Ashborn also squints his eyes. Uh, I'm gonna keep practicing. <laughs> Click ran. <laughs> Would you like to end downtime activities? Yeah, there's nothing else. I mean, there are things I would love to get. Uh, it would be nice to have all the time in the world, but I, d- I don't think Minus wants any more bad stuff to happen to the neighboring Seeing towns. the death and destruction that's happening is come to our conclusion. We need to get moving. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so you shall. Lord Baron says, uh, approaches you with Nihilus and Mulan goes, okay, we will prepare the cart. We will prepare the wagon uh, for tomorrow morning. You will leave through the northern gate and set your trails to the kingdom of Britain, into no man's land, heading as north as you possibly can to find a valley of winds. On the wagon will be a map of where we believe uh, the valley of winds could be located. Nobody's ever fully explored North Trillis before, and in those unmarked lands, where it's too cold for any civilization to thrive, is where the Valley of Winds is. We'll do our best to lead you where we know where our marked territory goes. The wagon will be outfitted with our best fireplace and a number of cots. It's a very large carriage. The tires are thick, and you may move a little bit slower until you start reaching snowy lands. The cart is sturdy, built for warmth and defense. It is not built for speed. And a woolly mammoth isn't necessarily the fastest creature there is. Just know that once you reach North Trillis, the further you will travel north, the harsher the winters are. Do not stay outside for long, and do your best to keep warm. Take frequent rests, for if the cold will get you, it will claim you. The winds north are very unforgiving. And if you don't have any questions for Lord Baron with what he just said, he gestures for the three of you to get some rest and he will meet you in the morning to set you out on your journey. I give him like the two finger salute. He gives you a nod, a respectful nod. Yeah, I, I don't need to say anything more to him. Uh, I definitely want to go to where the acrylic shard is that is holding Reginald before I leave. Yeah, so you make your way over to the bullpen where all these Sigic College scholars are hard at work on various tasks, experiments, and projects. And in the center of the bullpen is this Nothic twirling and moving around on mechanical ladders. And he has a grimoire in one hand and he is weaving and shaping the gem uh, in the other as the gem is floating on this pedestal. And you see that the color of the red shard, because it's about halfway complete, is now has started to turn blue. And you see every so often the gem shakes, electrifies, bursts into flames, and then calms down. And then Bowden begins to continue to work on it as he is working on the purification process. 
it is floating on this pedestal within a blue orb to keep it contained. And that is what Bowden in Nothic form is manipulating to purify the gem. What would you like to do while you're there? Basically sit with it for a little bit or near it and just see if I get like hoping to get some kind of vision or some kind of uh, uh, sign from Reginald within. Arcana check. <laughs> I'm really good at those. A 25. Holy. A 25. You sit down on the sidelines and you are staring at it, watching Bowden for about like a solid hour. You're just, you're lasered in on this gem and you're not really watching Bowden work anymore as you're just looking at the gem, trying to make a connection, closing your eyes and you're like bonding with it. And you do sense Reginald inside. And you notice that when the gem electrifies and combusts into flames, it matches something of a heartbeat as if Reginald is stressed out, but is trying to work on like he's on something like he's trying to better himself or he's trying to endure what is happening. And you get this overwhelming sense of determination from within the gym. You feel the evil almost fading away. Mm as the purification process is going. Do I feel like he's in pain or anything like that? He's in pain, but not in a sense like he's being tortured. Mm. And then as you're focusing on, in on the gem, uh, a voice breaks your trance. And it's a little bit of a high-pitched voice. It is not Bowden. Bowden is still hard, hard at work, but it's coming from the left of you and it's coming from lower, uh, from, from like almost like the floor as you're sitting down. And you hear this voice goes, something magical, isn't it? And to the left of you is Kemi Joe in a Sigic College Scholar lab coat. Oh. Swinging his feet on a stool, looking at the gem as he's like sitting next to you. Something magical, isn't it? Why should Bowden work? The, the, let's, you know, let's not bring him up. But yes, the, the gem is very magical. That's your gem, right? That's not the gem we found, right? Mm. No. Yeah, yeah it's, it's mine. No, but that's a gem we found. He points at the other one that has been uh, purified already, the one that's for Jarrell's father's axe. And he goes, who to think? Just about a year ago, the three of us were in his house. I was just on a, a, a quest to uh, from the college to retrieve an alchemy jug, and we came home with a legendary artifact, and that's when I met you three. Is that crazy? It is crazy. Who would have thought? Not me. I mean, I got some wicked late fees, from that but you know it's, it's, it's uh, you know oh yeah do you want don't i have his book i don't I I, a, if you have more it's fine I, I i have good news i have graduated from the city college i had finished my last semester i ended a little early to come uh work here uh and i've been a uh, bonin's assistant for some time now actually as i uh nod to him i was searching through my bag <laughs> and I pull out uh, al alchemy for dummies and I hand it back to him. <laughs> I still let you borrow this. Interesting. All right. <laughs> well, I don't need it. They took it out of my tuition. I, I had a large debt I needed to pay back and then, well, it's done. It's done. But yeah, it's crazy. It is. It is crazy. I was hoping to, so I can feel Reginald. Do I feel like he could hear me if I was like talking to him? No, you're not on the same plane. Mm. I mean, you could probably talk to him out loud and he might hear you. You don't know that. Give him some words of encouragement. Right. Uh, I do an ins inspirational. <laughs> <laughs> the gem begins to crack and fold on the... Pr no. <laughs> <laughs> he would just get some temporary hit points. Maybe that would, you know... Oh, that could help. help. You know, it might help him. Would you like to talk to the gem for 10 minutes to give it an inspirational speech? Armos is gonna, while talking to Kemi Joe, as if he's talking to Kemi Joe, but he's really talking to, to Reginald. He's uh, giving a great or er, a great speech about uh, the next two months will feel like an attorney without you by my side. Know that every moment apart feels my determination to reunite us and i'm talking to kimmy joe that while i'm saying this i'll be back before the moon completes its cycle twice which is <laughs> two months <laughs> oh my god that is beautiful i am almost you gonna are we gonna see each other again that soon oh my god yeah and then as i'm 
looking at uh, Kimmy Joe, I kind of side eye over to the gem, seeing if it if it moves at all. And uh, uh, it continues to go under its purification process. You don't uh, know if it had any effect at this time. Well, uh, Kimmy Joe and everyone else within range of me, especially Reginald, except for that Nothic son of a whatever is uh gets temporary hit points <laughs> okay as you give a inspiring speech and Kevin joe looks up at you he goes you really think you're gonna be you're gonna travel all the way to the valley of winds and back within a month we're gonna have to yeah that's quite overzealous of you that'd be impressive that would be some record if you come back within a month after his speech he, he's starting to feel he's trying to just end the conversation and and uh kind of start Start to leave, saying his goodbyes uh, to Kimmy Joe. Yeah, my break's just about over, too. But uh, you see Kimmy Joe's about to go help Boat in, continue his work as his assistant. He goes, all right, so I just want to say that it, we're all counting on you and me and Ace and Drell here. And uh, we know you're going to pull it through, but we also know how dangerous it can be. And uh, hopefully we can finally put an end to all of this. So, uh. You know, I know firsthand on the great things you can do. Just like when you saved me from those dastardly bugbears. And remember how we knocked that one out? We put him to sleep with one of my potions. Great times. <laughs> great times. He had that one wing. Great times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, we're counting on you. And uh, if no one else is going to say it, I believe in you. And he turns around and gets back to hard at work. We're going to go over a pan over to Minis. Minis, what are you doing? Yeah, Minis spends a little bit of time that night talking to Lord Baron before heading out. Yeah, and he happily lends an ear uh, to you. And he walks back to his office as the two of you talk. As he begins his preparations, it's like signing some paperwork and making sure everything's in order for the three of you. Uh, as you continue to talk to him, what would you like to say? So yeah, I, I'll be fine. Drell will too. I'm not worried about him. He's lived in the highest of peaks his whole life. And I mean, my feather here, this this keeps me magically warm. I'll, I should be fine. But I gotta say, I'm worried about Armos. You think he'll be fine with just those warm clothes with other spells we can do? I, I'm just, I'm just trying to be as cautious as possible, you know? Fire is your best friend. The garments that we have fashioned you are lined with red dragon scales. They will keep, they will certainly keep you warm. Now, if you're out in the elements, that chill up there is something real nasty. Any equipment that you may have to keep you warm may struggle in the north, but you are truly north. It may help you last longer than the average equipment may take you. You're out there within the elements for too long, it will surely claim you. And as far as your as far as Armos goes, with the equipment that we've given you now, we, I was informed by Nihilus and Mulan that they have given Drell the Lava Java Brew. Fantastic name, by the way. Could not agree with a better name. Uh, it's that okay. will help you keep you warm within the harsh elements. The fireplace is well equipped with plenty of wood, uh, and that'll keep you warm as well. The woolly mammoth will be fine in those conditions. If you find yourself meddling with some of the town with some of the free folk up there and when you get a little north you're going to be running into some draconians i feel draconians are friendly as long as you don't attack them first the draconians will be kind to you the giants up there well once they see a woolly mammoth they're going to do everything they can to take him from you oh good to know so okay <laughs> if you can avoid the giants avoid yes. the giants Talk to Draconians. Avoid the giants. Got it. For the record, I know all this, right? Or no? As Drell would know, the free folk up there contain several several races. Like there's orcs up there. There's Draconians, which are like these draconic creatures. There are frost giants. Uh, you haven't encountered frost giants in your lifetime as like the really dangerous tribes because they're really mm -hmm. far north. Uh, but you do know that they are not to be taken lightly. They travel in numbers and they are very strong. Well, great. That's, that's good information to have. I don't know. 
I don't think my feather will be able to help all of us, but at the very least, I can hopefully lead us into the coldest regions possible. Thank you, and before I leave, I, I just had to ask if... Did Titus Boulder Smasher reach out to you at all to offer any aid? We haven't gotten any letters from the Ivory Bulls, no. We don't keep much of a rapport with them from before the disaster. Oh. Um... Okay. From what I gather from you, the, the clan is mighty, but you tend to keep to yourselves, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, certainly. Which isn't necessary, which isn't wrong by any means. But as far as their, how they're doing with everything going on, I am, I am just not sure. Now, well, you wouldn't believe it, but I knew virtually nothing about the outside world until I stepped into it. Taking it by the horns. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, I... Obviously, with my bounty and everything going on, I'm I'm worried about them. I don't know if you could send a scout, maybe, just to check on them. I, I, I can show you where we are. You probably already know, but I do have a map. He takes out a map and he goes, please confirm your location um, of, your, of, your, of your clan, and we will, definitely, we will absolutely send a scout out. And we will alert you of any news that we find. Okay, good. Yes. Yes, this map is a little off, actually. We're a bit nomadic, so it's... This looks a bit old. I'll... I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll let the map makers know, and hopefully get the scout going, because that... I, I just... Couldn't bear the thought of anything happening to... Any of them. If they are mighty as they say they are... I'm sure they are fine. <sighs> You're right. My dad's fought... Beasts probably greater than I have. <laughs> I mean, he's chieftain for a reason. Well, thank you. I'm gonna do some chores before bed, but I, I appreciate your patronage, your conversation. Uh, there's too much to thank you for. I don't even know where to begin. We will all be thanking you soon enough. And I just give him a handshake and head on out. He takes your ham, takes your ham, <laughs> he takes your hand and shakes it respectfully as he locks eyes with you as he does so. And when I go out, the last thing I do before bed is I definitely go and I try to sneak away from Drell, but he might already be there to like go check out the mammoth and help train it. <laughs> uh, as you leave Lord Baron's office after having that conversation with him and then sharing a moment over the map, you do notice that as the door closes, you like look back and he goes, oh, when did you get here? And it's a little Sid that's dressed up as ah. Lord Baron. And he's like a walking stick. He's like, mur, 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 mur. oh, and you see that he gets like a little, a little laugh from it. Sid of the divider, of course. And you go out to the mammoth and Drell, are you there? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Drell's, Drell's de just going to wing it the next day. He has no plan on training it at all. That's so funny. <laughs> you go out to the stables, and there's this large mammoth laying down, but it is not asleep as it's towards the end of the day. And you see that the mammoth looks a little worried. It, like, looks around. It has these big doe eyes. It's, it is almost an adult. I, whoever's the handler, I go to the handler. Uh, excuse me. Would you mind if I just tried to introduce myself since we'll be obviously venturing forth with this fine beast? You see that it's two halflings, like, shoveling hay and trying to keep it as warm as possible and its feet. It's like, of course, of course, absolutely, absolutely, Minus. And they step aside and let you have a moment. Whoa, whoa, Beethoven, Beethoven. It's okay. We, uh, we will protect you, we will feed you, and we are excited to become friends with you. Animal handling, animal handling check. Oh, eh, it's an 11. Not terrible, but not great. It's not scared of you. It does it does know that you are a friend and that you mean no harm, but it doesn't necessarily take to you. Oh, oh that's okay. I, I know. It, it's our first meeting. Ooh. You're scared. Ooh. And I can't speak with animals. <laughs> can't speak with animals. And what are you saying to me? <clears throat> can you hear me now? Yes! Yes, I can hear you! Ah. Oh, that's much better, isn't it? <laughs> what a great... What a great moment! Finally, I get to speak to somebody! I know! It's wild. Uh, I, I'm still not that used to myself. I've only done it about five times in my life. You're, wow. 
What you speak a mammoth fluidly. Uh, Those other mammoths yes. must have taught you taught you how to speak our language perfectly. I look at Sid. <laughs> there is a Sid that looks like a mammoth. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> this is unprecedented. Uh, but no, I'm not going to lie. We need to start off without lies. And I, I have not... I don't speak mammoth, but I'm magical. And I'm one with nature. So I, I have magical means, if that makes sense to you. I'm not familiar with these, with this term magic, but you are truly exemplary if you are able to speak to me. Ah, well, not as exemplary as you. You are majestic, and also, I don't know if you already have a name, but we gave you a name in case you didn't. I do not have a name. Ah, well, it's Beethoven. Oh, I love it. I will, I will gladly wear this name as a title as Beethoven. Ha! <laughs> Well, I would rather not- I would- How do I say this? Well, there's no beast I would rather fight with and ride with than you. You seem very honorable. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you say fight? What? No, no, no. You see, I'm not much of a fighter. Oh. Oh. Well, what are those tusks for? Well, defense, and they make a really good- oh. Great headrest, and I can push well, logs with them. I love pushing logs. Nothing you need to worry about, because if anything tries to hurt us, me and my friends are going to take care of it. So you yes, just hang you tight. you take care of it, and I run. Well, well, don't run, because then you could get lost, and a giant could eat you. Oh, oh this giant? You see, that gets very scared. N you... Well, n not necessarily. <laughs> now Minus is sweating. <laughs> <laughs> No, this, this is going great. <laughs> um, so, Dirk, I mean, I'm just saying, if you're off on your own, you never know. It's like a hypothetical. You never know what could find you on your own, but things are less likely to attack you and, and, and fight you and try and eat you if you're with us. Okay, so when scary thing happens, uh, we run together. Got it. N no, you, you sit down and we protect you. And can I try to do a persuasion check, I guess? Uh, another animal handling check. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is so how this is going. Uh, seven. Uh, sit down, most vulnerable. Uh, up and running and tremors and tusks. <laughs> okay. Well, we... Okay, maybe I'll run with you and... Uh, 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 oh. We'll get to it when we get to it. Just, I promise you, you'll be fine. And... Don't tell Drell we talked. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who that is. He's great. You're going to love him. He's going to be leading you. So. Uh, okay. I've been told to push cart and go towards cold. Yes. Oh, you're a great learner. Well, I appreciate the talk and I wish you a good rest before we venture out tomorrow. I will. I am looking forward to it. As Beethoven of the North. Of the North. I like that. I'll let the guys know. Beethoven of the North. That's great. Making it your own. No giants. Until the sun rises again. Yep. Don't run. Okay, bye. And I turn off, speak with animals, and I go to bed. You hear a woolly mouth as you run back. Uh, and I'm sweating for like an hour before I get to sleep. <laughs> okay. So the three of you go in for the night. Is there anything else the three of you would like to do before we move on to the next dawn? Um, I feel like we need to rebrand ourselves because of the <laughs> blood shard bandits. Breakfast meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that will be a, a topic that needs to happen soon. Or maybe a traveling montage of us yeah. trying to figure it out. <laughs> okay. So the three of you go to bed. As a Sigil College, college Scholars are hard working into the night. The three of you get as much rest as you possibly can. And as the sun rises, you hear that there is a early morning bell as soon as the sun touches the sky. As soon as first light is shown, a bell is rung and awakens the three of you. And the three of you gather your things. And as you gather around the breakfast table, begin to converse and talk about your travels. You see that Nihilus and Mulan had stopped by to let you know that they're getting everything ready for the three of you. 
and that within the next 30 minutes, the three of you will be ready to set out. Three of you eat a nice big breakfast and get your things ready to go. And you travel to the northern gate of Lord Baron's Divider. Inside Lord Baron's Divider, where the stables are, there are these large steel doors that lead out to the Kingdom of Brim. And in front of those doors, before leading you to the outside world, is this massive steel and iron reinforced cart capable of going over rough terrain. This thing is clearly built for stability, not for speed. It is a huge double-decker carriage. And as you go inside, you see that there are two levels and it's a little bit cramped for you, Joe. It's about six feet tall on each floor. Well, the first floor is about six feet tall. So you're hunched over and on the, on the first floor, there's this, there's this fireplace at the back of it. There's a table which, and then there's like crates of rations and firewood to fuel the fire pit within the carriage. And then there's a mm -hmm. small um, spiral staircase that leads up into about a small compartment. You cannot stand up in this small compartment. There's three cots in there. It's about from floor to ceiling, about four feet room of headspace. And it's just there to sleep. It's just sleeping quarters. The three of you will be sitting uh, on the inside and at the front of the carriage on the inside, there is a hatch and there are reins. So it looks like you can guide the mammoth from inside the cart. And this thing is designed to keep you warm at all times. Also inside the cart are three sets of clothes. There are these fur coats that go over your armor and seem to attach at the various clip points at the attachment points in your armor. So Drell, you see that this fur coating like links into your armor perfectly. And mm. on the outside, it's this white, it's like white on white fur that makes, that helps you blend in with the snow. The hood is long and draping, almost like a dragon's mantle. There's clearly some cool design that had gone into the fur, uh, into the fur coats rather just just for functionality but a little bit of fashion in, in them in them too on the inside all these red dragon scales straight from a red dragon and you feel like this warming heat coming off of them you go to put the uh the fur coats on now and you immediately start to sweat because it's you're about the sun it's still summertime but it's like almost becoming fall because you've been there for about a month now, but like you instantly start to sweat because it is too warm to wear. Mm. So Drell's, your, yours looks more of like a, like a frost dragon-esque look. Minus, yours looks more along the lines of like a panther or like a jungle cat. Meow. And Armos, yours look, has more of the look of like a hawk or a crow. Seems like whoever took like the liberties to design these fur coats, like kind of looked at you and like made it form fitting and try to match whatever aesthetic you were just emanating at the time. You also have uh, on top of that, you have this map that leads you into the north through the kingdom of Brim into no man's land, which is that land bridge that connects you to North Trillis and then a path that goes as north as possible before it trails off. Lord Baron then approaches you and hands you a small box. He goes, in here are some pewter mugs for the lava java that Nihilus had given you. Well, I rebranded it, but yeah. We can talk about that later. So when you use the lava java, make sure they're in the pewter mugs. They'll keep them warm for at least 12 hours in the harsh cold. So if you find yourselves traversing the snow, going where the mammoth cannot take you, the lava java will keep you warm. And this will keep the lava java warm until you need it. And there are these three beautifully crafted uh, pewter thermoses. Also in that box is a scroll. He goes, this, this is a scroll of teleportation. Once you grab the ax, use this scroll and walk through it. It will return you here to Lord, to my, to my keep. It'll at least save you a trip back. The only caveat, the only catch is that we need to be on the same plane of existence. You must be on the material plane for this scroll to work. If you find yourself in Shadowfell 
or some other mysterious plane, you must make it back to the material plane for this scroll to work. And then lastly, there, there's a small wooden structure in there, and it looks like a little cottage. And he goes, Minus, I took, you, I took your words into consideration as you were concerned about some of your friends. And he hands you the cottage, and he goes, this is a limited item. This little wooden cottage contains a spell that you can use three times daily. Each dawn it refreshes. And the spell is Tiny Hut. Oh. And he hands you this wooden cottage. Uh, what the spell Tiny Hut does, if you're not familiar, you'll speak its command word and it'll activate this spell. It is a 10 foot radius, a mobile dome of force springs into the existence around you and remains stationary for the duration or until you leave. Uh, nine creatures of medium size or smaller can fit inside the dome, and, this, and then Fuck. the spell fails if the area includes a larger creature or more than nine creatures. Um, creatures and the objects within the dome, uh, you can cast a spell and move through it freely. All other creatures and objects are barred from passing through it. Spells and other magical effects can't extend through the dome or be cast through it. The atmosphere inside the space is comfortable and dry, regardless of the weather outside. Until the spell ends, you can command the interior to become dimly lit or dark. The dome is opaque from the outside, and any color you choose is outside of any other color you choose, but it is transparent from the inside. So, you, so nobody can look in, but you can look out. It lasts for eight hours, and you can use it three times a day. So basically, you have this tiny portable home. And I'll let you flavor that however you like when you go to use it, what it looks like. And he hands that little cottage to you, Menace. Wow, thank you. Of course. Three charges. Keeps us warm. Uh, replenishes when again? At dawn. At every dawn? Every dawn. How long does it last when I first put it up? It'll last eight hours. Huh. Oh, we both, since we're going north, won't it be longer? Like, what if the sun doesn't go down and it's like daytime all day or nighttime all night? Does it still recharge? Unfortunately, it does change within a day. That doesn't necessarily mean 12 hours or 24 hours. It's when the sun sets at your location and rises again. See, I knew it. Huh. I knew it. That's a loophole, Minus. That's a loophole. Oh, you keep telling me about these loopholes. Okay, well, it's a good thing to have, and we'll definitely help uh, Demon Boy over there. What? 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 <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> what? We're trying. We're just trying to keep you warm, okay? It's gonna be really cold up there. My feather yeah. keeps me warm. Drell is just from there. Do you have some special cold resistances we don't know about? Uh, no. But well, that's why we have the hut. I I light my uh. I conjure like flames in my hand. I got fire. Uh huh. I should be okay. Oh yeah, you could just cast that infinitely. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. We'll see. You know, <laughs> I might have a different tune once we get up there. Who knows? Well, we appreciate all the help. You see that as you go to leave and get ready to go on the cart, you see that Bowden is there, M uh, Nihilus and Mulan are there, Kemi Joe is there, and Lord Baron is there, and they set you and they're waving you off and as the three of you get on the cart it goes we believe in you and thank you for taking this treacherous dirt journey if anyone can make it back from the valley of winds we believe it's the three of you Bowden in his gothic form just clatters his teeth and you see Kemi Joe is like trying to hold back he's like oh my god they're going on a great journey they're gonna come back and save the world yeah. I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> you see that there's a Sid next to Kemi Joe with like a monocle on and a little scholar's outfit with like a potion bottle also crying <laughs> next to him. Well, what is happening? <laughs> and Sid hugs him. <laughs> Your main Sid is like, right? <laughs> <laughs> huh. Well, it's gonna be a long time since we do this, buddy. Secret handshake. <laughs> And we spend way too long doing our extra long <laughs> You and Kevin handshake. Joe do your extra long handshake and you, the three of you set out and you exit Lord Baron's Divider as the mammoth named Beethoven pulls your cart and you exit through the northern gates 
as the large double steel doors open to the Kingdom of Brim. The Kingdom of Brim, although shares the same land as the Kingdom of Aramor, is an entirely different world. As the three of you know, Brim is full of free folk, mostly dwarves, gnomes, goliaths, and orcs that live within its borders. All towns may work together within Brim for the greater good, but each town remains close to their own. Every town has its own sets of laws and customs. And as you leave and traverse into the kingdom of Brim for the first time, you notice something strange as the mammoth begins to pull you as you leave. Although it is morning, the clouds are heavy and they are not heavy with rain, but instead the clouds are red today. And that is where we're going to end this week's session. Oh no. Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> yeah, I want to keep playing, man. <laughs> but man, it's good to be home. <laughs> <laughs> you're heading there. You're heading there. Woo. All right. It's a bit of a lore episode and a downtime episode, but a lot of things happened. You learned a lot, too. Mm -hmm. You learned a lot. We can talk about it on the after show. Woo. You know the deal. Ooh, any any closing remarks before we get into the recommendations? Uh, I have too many SIDs to put on my sheet now. <laughs> yeah, we're filling out that list. It's so weird. All these SIDs are, like, bonding with people you're talking to now. And, like, you seem to leave a SID wherever you go. So those SIDs don't, like, rejoin? They stay? S they they, they have been staying with those people. So is Minus has an infinite amount of SIDs and they just seem to appear when needed. Like that's literally what a swarm keeper ranger is identified as. It's just things come out of like nooks and crannies where you're not looking. <laughs> so he has an infinite amount of SIDs. Mm. There's a SID that specifically recruits other SIDs to join the battalions. And he is working <laughs> overtime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he has not got a break to... in some time. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to the shout outs, the Patreon shout outs, uh, I, I mentioned him and one of the patrons. So, okay. Well, we're going to, we have a lot of talk about the after show. So, we're just going to go ahead and save it for that. If you're not a part of the after show, you haven't listened to the after show, go ahead and check out our Patreon. It's all on there. Um, and does anybody got a wreck? I have one if nobody has. Alec, you haven't done one in like, Eight sessions. It's your turn. Oh, God. I keep track of these now. I have an Excel doc. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to let Tony go, and I'll, wow. I'll do the next one. I got one if Tony's already done a few. Whoa, 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 whoa. I haven't well, done one in a Dan. while. <laughs> you haven't done one in the last has... session. <laughs> what did Dan, I say last who, session? What was my Dan, you last said session? You, you started documenting, right? Who's done the most wrecks? Um, it's either you or Tony, I think. There's no shot. Jared, Jared, Jared yeah, get I think Jared all the time. As I go higher, Jared does, definitely has a few more. <laughs> okay, okay. You got that 100 miles say, and you. scope. <laughs> the 100 <laughs> mile view. I think I have the least. Looks like I have the oh, least. Oh, you went last time. You did primal. No, that was the that was before. You did grind last time. Oh, yeah. Oh, grind is a good oh, movie. Yeah. Hopefully you guys watched it. If you're listening, hopefully you watched it. And then before that, you did Storks. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you watched it by now. It's fucking <laughs> slaps. Go get them. What's yours, Jared? You haven't done one in four days. <laughs> Woo! Or four uh, sessions. It's a silly little game. It's free uh, for the, uh, oh, the really? demo. And it's called Die in the Dungeon. It's D&D <gasps> related, kind of. Um, it, it's a Slay the Spire Dungeons and Dragons oh, kind of mashup. Man, I'm it's down. really cool. You roll dice, uh, you can upgrade dice, and you get fun little uh, little perks like each level and things like that, like Slay the Spire. It, it's only the demo is out right now because the full game's not released yet. But oh my god, it's You're a little frog. pretty cool. Yeah, it's re it's little, really cool. It's a funny. really cool little game. So if you're you know looking what? something to kill time, that's what I would suggest. All right. All right. Solid wreck, solid wreck. We're going to go ahead and move on to the Patreon supporters. Say goodbye, everybody. Good episode 106. Say goodbye, everybody. Come here. Goodbye. Later. Very sad goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's me, Drell, and welcome back to Drell's Bodacious Botatorium, the only gym for all the right muscles. Thank you again for your memberships. 
This gym palace would not be the same without all of you. I just have some house cleaning announcements I need to make, and then I will let you get back to your session. First, we have the shadow smugglers. To the dread. Even though it was short-lived and the sauna is back out of service, I still appreciate the support. I understand you can't control how hot you get sometimes, especially when you get angry. Trust me, if anyone can relate to rage, it's me. To be honest, I'm just glad I'm not the only one Jack Sonasinki rubs the wrong way. God, I hate that guy. P.S. I will also need some gold for that smoothie. Next, Alara Dawnstar. Although Alara is relatively new, she has recently been promoted to supervise the Blend and Bulk Fitness Smoothie Station, which is now hiring part-time. Please contact Alara if you're interested in applying. Please, we're uh, kind of desperate. The only ones that have been applying so far are the SIDS. I'm actually thinking about making Sid of the Ashbourne her supervisor though. Could be a good move. Next, we have Reese. After returning from his trip exploring Humbrea, Reese has a new outlook on life. He's made it very clear to me that he's no longer interested in teaching cycling. Due to this, he will be transferring from cycle classes to yoga and meditation. So far, the only person to sign up has been Menace for every class. I did see one though called Let's Froya. It seems to be a mix of froyo and yoga. Sounds fun and tasty. Fresh back from his suspension is our lead lifeguard, Julius Kendrick. Although he now has all of his certifications, I can't help but to notice how often he comes and goes. He'll be there one moment and literally I'll turn around and he's not there the next. I guess as long as he's there when it counts, that's all that matters, right? <laughs> Anyways, next time you see him, please be sure to give him a warm welcome back. Next is our Blood Shard Bandits. Reigns, I appreciate you listening to me when I brought up the tank tops, but when I said, what's the point if they don't cover anything, I didn't think you would just stop wearing them all together. Also, I know you're preparing for the semi-annual Drills Bodybuilding Competition, but you've literally bought every bottle of bronzer we have. I think you're good, bro. Next is Morgan Ulthill. Morgan, I appreciate you dropping your companion off at daycare. I also understand there was a mix-up in the requested grooming service and your fox received a blowout. I guess it could have been worse, right? <laughs> like, uh, perm, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, my sincerest apologies and you'll re be receiving one free week of our companion watching services. Miss Sid will be providing you the coupon next time you're in. Next is Artemis. I consider you now the unofficial official, but technically still unofficial, bouncer of the gym. Not only do you now make sure you put away all your weights, but you've actually been hunting down others to do the same, and I absolutely love it. Kemi Joe told me how you were on him before he was even done with the machine. <laughs> Keep it up. Next is Tanner Smith. Tanner, I want to again welcome you to the gym. As you've already been instructed several times, you only need to scan your ID once upon entry. What you don't need to do is come up to the front desk and scan it every time you go to do a different machine. I promise you, we've got you accounted for. Sly, I have your appointment for the Wear Rage Room all set. That will be every day from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Here, I was thinking the raccoons were nocturnal. <laughs> I mean, I am. I'm not a morning guy, but oh well. Also, your profile has now been updated to reflect both forms, so we won't mistake you for a normal raccoon again. Next is Rommel. Your wood expertise is needed at the sauna. There was um an unfortunate fire a few days back, and we'll need your help to rebuild. Remember, I need the wood, but please leave the dirt. So, I've actually assigned a Sid to sweep up behind you as you walk through the gym, so you should be good. Next is the Sidget College alumni, Andrew Hall. 
Andrew, I recently had a conversation with you talking about the one smoothie per hour requirement for anyone not working out. Did you really think you could get away with just sitting in the corner and drinking one smoothie halfway and then putting water into it and then drinking the water and then continuously refilling it? You didn't think I would notice that? Come on, Andrew. One smoothie per hour. Next, we have Patrick Wennerstrom, aka Punk. After reaching a mutually beneficial agreement, Punk will now be performing live music here at Drell's Bodacious Bodatorium every Tuesday and Friday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. As long as I get to play the triangle, anyone who attends will receive a raffle ticket to potentially win, wait for it, 12% off their next smoothie. Next, we have Robit. Robit, I understand you got into it the other day with another member at the gym. Something about a battle or a rescue mission that had to do with some royals of your bread people. Anyways, although the gym is never the place for violence, I totally understand that some people can just be total knobs. Next time, just meet them in the parking lot. Next is St. Chaos. I have a small complaint about the last shipment we got from Lelouch's Farms. The fruit and everything was fine, but um, I believe we were missing the Jarrell's special case in the delivery. Anyways, please make sure the brew, I mean packages, comes in the next one. Next is Sergio Rodriguez. Sergio, here at the DBB, we pride ourselves on safety. Please make sure you're attaching the emergency cutoff cord when yes, on the stair climber, elliptical, and treadmill. I will say, it's pretty impressive how much cardio you do, even if cardio's a joke. Next is from Brea's Heroes, Mr. Man with Glass, Odie Mel, and Will Miller. I do not know what it is with you three, but for some reason, you have gone from freeze tag to the hot sensation, see what I did there, of pickleball. Now that it's an all-out war between the tennis players and pickleball players, I will need you to reserve your court whenever you want to play. We're not getting into that again. Next, we've Ripcord, Toby Large, and John Carroll. I understand it's hard to play two-on-two basketball with three people, but please stop bringing in Miranor as a guest every day. You each get one guest pass a month, and Miranor is still on his six-month ban. He's not allowed in. And finally, we have Johnny Tar. You never came to talk to me or invited me to kickball, so you're still banned from the yoga room. No fro-yo for you. Well, that's all I have for everyone today. Thanks again for all the love and support, and I'll see you next time. Drell out.